itself. Right. We are screen recording, so you get a link to that at the end. Okay, it says to estimate the location of the line indicated by the data points shown. So the kind of the, this thing with regression is that you could draw a lot of lines. The thing that's probably most important here is that you have the same number of points above and below the line is a rough, it's a rough guideline. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's got to go in the direction of the data. Okay. Like if you were to draw this line, that's wrong because it doesn't go in the direction of the data, even though it satisfies what I just said, half above, half below. You could also draw this line, but that's also wrong because it doesn't go in the direction of the data. So um, you as the student have to try to draw this line. Okay. Now, okay. now what, what I would do is try to pick nice points that it goes through. Uh, it actually kind of worked out because that's a nice point and that's a nice point there because we do need the slope. Okay. Okay. And and the, like the, you're kind of like massaging your answer a little bit because you're, you want the calculations to work out nicely. Um, mm -hmm. I think this one will. So we'll see though. So we got to write the ordered pairs for both. So the, the first point down here at the bottom is 60 comma one. And then the top right one, the ordered pair is 180 comma nine. Mm -hmm. So your slope is y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, nine minus one over 180 minus 60. That's eight over 120, ends up being one over 15, okay? Okay. Now, if you made a different line, or if you look at your friend's homework, you know, when you guys get to class, compare notes, his might be slightly different. They're just, when they say estimate, there's a lot of possibilities, no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. But that's M. That's M. So when we, over the weekend, though, I talked about the idea of just writing it in this form, not getting caught up in their form until the end. Gotcha. And I think that will help uh, tremendously. So Y equals 1 over 15X plus B. To find B, you need an X and a Y. Well, you have two ordered pairs that you started with. So choose the one that you like. Um, I like that first one. Mm-hmm. And why, why do I like the first one? Uh, Slightly well, simpler. maybe, you know, you, you can have, a, you don't have to have a reason, but in this case, it does go into 15 nicely. Mm -hmm. gotcha. so, so that's probably a reason. Are you allowed to use a calculator in this class or is it all by hand? Yeah, I'm allowed to use a calculator. Okay. So if you need one, please use it. Um, if you, if you'd like me to suggest one that's available online, um, I like this Desmos Scientific. Uh, I'll drop yeah. that in the chat here. Yeah, it's, that's why I use most of the time. It's really, really helpful, um, more modern here. But we're going to keep going here. Subtract four, so B is minus three. So that goes back into this line right here. So Y equals one over 15X minus three. And if you were to submit that, you would not get credit because you do have to go back and use the, the format mm -hmm. there using the S equals m c plus b so th the main mapping here is that instead of y you're going to use s instead of x you're going to use c so s equals 1 over 15 c minus 3. gotcha okay i see So I can always I can always give you a problem like this, but we have you have a lot you you have a couple of problems here. I mean, we're going the full fifty minutes tonight, so plenty of time. Um, do you want us just to move on to like seven? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think that was pretty helpful, so we can move on to this. Okay, seven. Sorry, uh, and I think this is one of those uh, questions that you just like yeah. the Saxon method. That that's that'll be okay. I think I've got this one down. Uh, yeah. but I will ask if I'm if I'm ever unsure. You may have to send over another picture. But to me, yeah. this is the this is the r. R is three, and the theta is minus two fifty. Does that sound right to you? Uh huh. So the the rectangular coordinates are x and y. You know, x is is left or right, y is up or down. 
radius of three means a, a direction or a, a distance out and the, the angle is a rotation. Mm -hmm. So just real quick, like where is this point on the unit circle? Or, or not the unit circle, the three. It's it's minus 250, so this is zero. Normally you go you go counterclockwise, but when you're negative, you go the other direction. Minus 90, yeah. minus 180, <laughs> minus 270. So you're actually over over here somewhere, and then you go out three. Gotcha. So that's that's kind of where you are. Now, what does that tell you in terms of X and Y? It means you're gonna go left. So it's gonna be some sort of a negative number up, up Y. Okay. So so X is R cosine theta. Y is R sine theta. Does that look familiar to you? Yes. So you just have to know these values. Now, what's odd to me is they're not giving you unit circle values. Like this is not a nice number. Mm -hmm. Um. Do you know what I mean by that, or is that unclear? Unclear. Okay. Sorry, I'm sending you so many links. I really like. I really like this. This they call it a cheat sheet. It's a, really it's a reference sheet. Um, it's okay. everything that you needed to know in trigonometry. Some of the stuff in geometry. But I'm going to go to page three and snip in the unit circle. But I really like that one. It's worth having. Okay. Out. So what I mean by nice. Nice is all the num all the angles on this unit circle. Mm -hmm. These are the nice ones. Now, now minus two fifty. You know, it's over here. But just think of it as positive two fifty. Two fifty is over here. Like that's not a. We don't know it. It's not a nice value. It's not friendly. Uh, uh -huh. So, you have not taken trigonometry, though. Is that right? No. Okay. So my guess is we're just going straight to a calculator on this one. Yeah. Three cosine minus 250, three sine minus 250. If you have a calculator handy, please uh, please try to calculate these with me and make sure your mode is in degrees if you're using a, like a TI-8384. Yeah. So let me, yeah, so then same. X is always going to equal uh, cosine. Yes. And Y is always sign. Gotcha. So how many oh. decimal places to round to? I have no idea. Ask your teacher. We usually do two. Okay. Do what the teacher wants, because what Matthew wants is not important. I'm not grading you. Gotcha. So then this first one is negative 1.03. And Good. the second one will be 2.82. Yes, and that's that's consistent with with this drawing here, where we're going left and then up. Mm -hmm. So, and they want us to, I guess me to, put in terms of like right or up. So they'll usually just, say just ordered an ordered pair here is what they're looking for. Yeah, that's that's the that's what they want as your final answer. Gotcha. Uh, first, on, I'm just looking at the question. They have this really weird thing where they want you to put it as like our use as in the basically the x and y and so oh, okay okay for, so, they would make you me say you know negative 1.03 r plus uh 2.82 u so i don't yeah, know why but yeah i get it so do do we do you always you use r and u or is it also l and d or is it always in terms of r and u i've seen them in the middle of uh, like in lessons in the middle of it, they'll say LED to help it be simpler, but then they'll convert it to like negative okay. R or okay. negative U or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like you said, it's it's negative one point zero three R, two point eight two U. Yeah. Or yeah. or well, I'm sorry, there's a not a comma, it's a plus. Yeah. Kind of interesting. All right. Nine. Do we have to do nine? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. We're skipping eight. Is that right? No, no to eight. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can skip that. Okay. All right. Begin with ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero and complete the square to derive the quadratic formula. Okay. This is 
this is not useful, but we, I mean, we have to do it, but just so you know, there's no value in this, like deriving formulas that already exist. We should be using the formulas. That's, that's a really important thing. Yeah. All right. Um, many, many ways to do this. Do you have a preference for how we start? Cause I, I mean, I, I can sort of jump uh -huh. in and do this a bunch of ways. Anything like, like so, I would oh, go ahead. Yeah. So I'm just looking at the lesson. Yeah. It's something that I find a little bit confusing because uh, they basically just want us to convert from one formula to another with That's no right. specific values. And so uh, it looks like the answer here is just X equals minus B uh, you know, plus or minus. Uh, anyway, so they give us like this form basically. Right. And so uh, I guess. So, so uh, let me, let me show you the traditional way to do this. I, I, okay. I just, so you first divide everything by a. Yeah. So this leaves you with x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals zero. Mm -hmm. Now, the next thing that I, I like to do is I like to move this constant over. Yeah. And I'm going to leave a space. So I'm leaving a space minus c over a leaving a space. So there's there's really like a bucket here. Uh, it's 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 going to be a sharing thing. They're going to get the same value. All right. Now, this is the completing the square part on the left. You have to take half of B over A, which is really awkward because it's like, well, I don't know B or A. Half means multiply by a half. So it ends up being B over 2A. Yeah. Okay. And I think they make a square of the result. So, so, so here, like... yeah. So here's here's where that goes. That, that B over 2A goes here. <laughs> you square it to go back here. So you have to end up squaring B over 2A and you're squaring the top, squaring the bottom. Mm -hmm. So it becomes B squared over 4A squared. And that goes here and it goes here. Gotcha. Okay. And then, uh, yes, they break that all out. So now, so now on the on the the right here, um, for the moment, we're just going to leave it like this. Now, just just the the overarching goal is to solve for x. So we're in a really yeah. good spot, actually. They were like, you take a square root, you subtract. So we're really really close. Okay, we're going to clean up this right hand side a little bit here. We're going to make a uh, common denominator on the right. So, uh -huh. the com so the common denominator is 4a squared. So mm -hmm. we're going to multiply the one on the left here by 4a and 4a. Yeah. So that gives you minus 4ac, like that. Okay, and now we can combine them. Now I'm going to switch the order. So I'm going to make it B squared instead of minus 4AC minus 4AC over 4A squared like mm -hmm. that. And I'm going to bring this, this other thing down. Do you get these derived problems on your tests? Uh, I, I haven't encountered one yet. Okay. Well, then just keep following along and it's no big deal if you can't figure it out uh, on your own because th these are tough. So you take a square to both sides. And, and by convention, we write plus or minus here. Uh -huh. So on the left, it's X plus B over 2A equals plus or minus. Now you take the square root of the top and then you take the square root of the bottom. Mm -hmm. So the bottom is where you, you have a nice simplification. The square root of four is two. The square root of A squared is A. Okay, and then you can move the minus B over 2A over. So X equals minus B over 2A plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4A C, left to C out over 2A. And then you combine the numerators. Since the denominators are the same, and this is this is how it is it is derived. Yep. And 
That's exactly the result. They just have that in the lesson, then they make you repeat it a couple times on that's your right. own work. That's right. That's right. So, so the Saxon is really like repetitive. So if it were me, I would have an organization system to like figure to note when like I did already did the same problem mm -hmm. because I don't want to redo the problem. Like I just want to copy my work down. Yeah. Something like this, you're never going to do on a test or quiz, you know, just, just, uh, you know, have that in the back of your mind um, that, you know, there's so many good tools now. I mean, scanning tools, converting these things to, I mean, you can take the notes and I'm sure that you can upload them and get a, get this type set pretty nicely, you know, searchable even mm -hmm. um, tons of, tons of tools like that available. So um, just keep that in mind. All right. Okay. So we've knocked out um, six, seven to nine. Yeah. What else is uh, Let's see on your mind? Um, probably 10 and well you know by extension 11 but really just 10 and then you know i can solve 11 from 10. all right so i there it is 10 is okay All right, so to use the quadratic formula, it has to be in what's called standard form. Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. But what that means is that everything's on one side of the equation, zero's on the right. Is this equation in standard form? Uh, no. No, so we're, gonna, so we're gonna add two x to both sides. We're gonna add seven to both sides. 5x squared plus 2x plus 7 equals zero. zero. Okay, so now we can use the quadratic formula, but you have to identify A, B, and C. A is the number in front of x squared, B is the number in front of x, C is the constant. Uh huh. What is A, what is B, what is C? A is going to be 5, B is 2, and then C is 7. Yes. And then you have to know the quadratic formula. Um, are you normally allowed to use an equation sheet or a reference sheet on your exams? Uh, we're allowed to do uh, self-made uh, formula sheets, basically. Okay, so this is this is something that whenever you see me box in something, it's usually a formula or reference you should you should put down on something like that. Mm -hmm. um, because you 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 cannot do it without this. It's, yeah. You just you know, never, 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 no chance. But from here, when you have the formula, it's really not that hard. You're just putting numbers in. Mm -hmm. Minus two plus or minus the square root two squared minus four times five times seven all over two times five. Right. Now, right. Yeah. Um, these were all positives. So you don't have to worry about signage and negatives and stuff like that. Um, Maybe in the next one, we'll see something like that. But um, now we, I mean, we're, we're done in some ways, but, we, but the, this part inside the roots really the, the place where most students struggle. So four minus 140, um, four times five times seven is 140. So it's minus two plus or minus the square root of minus 136 over 10. Okay. So what is your comfort level with reducing roots in them, reducing roots with I. Does that mean anything to you? Yeah. So if there's a net, you know, a minus symbol in the simplified uh, square root, uh, you would put that to the side basically, and then it would become a positive number. Yeah. So you treat it like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work it out over here on the left. You treat this like square root of negative one times 136, and then square root of negative one times the square root of 136. Do you remember what the representation for square root of negative one is? Uh, yes, it's an imaginary number, so it'd be i. Be i. Now the 136, you break apart. You can either use a factor ladder or, or a factor tree. I, I use factor trees. I don't have a preference though. Um, uh -huh. is, th is this something you've seen before though? Uh, yeah, once or twice. They usually just have us uh, 
you know, divide it just mentally and then we okay. which, yeah. So, so, for, so the reason I like the tree is is you can then collect the ones that come out. So you're looking for pairs. Yeah. It's like it's like socks. I wear matching socks. If you don't, it, it only works with matching socks. You you bring the matches out, okay? The thing, and so you're gonna bring a two out. So that'd be uh two square root of 34. Uh, I two I square root of yeah. 34. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Two I square root of 34 all over 10. And then you have to divide both by 10. It's not a choice. So that's yep. uh, negative. Oh, yeah. Plus minus uh, I, 3, 4, yes. 5, by 5. So, so they, gen they generally want it in this A plus B, I form. Meaning you have to, like, you can't leave it like this. Even mm -hmm. if it was non-reducible. Non like, let's say that number was like a uh, 3. Well, that's a bad example. Um, but anyway, the point is, is like, you, you, you have to split them apart. You can't just... Gotcha. You can't just uh, go think, oh, no, you know. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, there's a lot there. Why don't you try the next one on your own, um, but ask me questions along the way, like if you get stuck okay. doing something. Because, the, and, and I will do this from time to time. It's, it's really no different than the previous one, except it's different numbers. You're still going to use a quadratic formula. You still got to get everything on one side of the equation. You still got to use A, B, and C. You probably have to reduce a root. Give that a try right. and ask any <clears throat> questions if you have any along the way. Very well. So I just do this on my paper in front of me. Sure. Yep. All right. So we're gonna get everything in. Uh, sorry, x squared plus uh, a x squared plus b x plus uh, was that c? I think. So it's going to be, we're going to divide. Well, first, let's put in that form. Hold on. I got to sneeze. Don't, don't worry about it. Just mute yourself. Um, look, we're recording, but the only people going to watch this is you, maybe your parents. Being, and if it's an issue, you know, I'll take yeah. it down. But oh, yeah, no worries. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, if you ever need to go out, like if you ever need to leave the lesson, like, Please, like, just tell me, hey, Matthew, I need to leave. I'll be back. I mean, occasionally, you know, someone comes to my door and I got to step away for 30 seconds. So, um, yeah, be, be as comfortable as you can be uh, around me. But, uh, yeah, keep going. Give us a try. Um, All right. So, uh, oh, let's see. So, I have x squared plus 7 uh, over 3x plus 1 equals 0. Are, did I hear some division? Uh, yeah, seven divided by three. You don't want to do that. You just want to label A, B, and C. Okay, right. That's that's unfortunately not something that they were saying, but that sounds a lot simpler. Yeah. So you're you're mixing the completing the square, which is not which is related but not part of this. Oh, okay. You just label A, B, and C. Now, if you go back and look at my problem, you're going to see me do the same thing. Okay. So this is gotcha. one of those like where if you watch the replay, stop it right here whenever you see the problem and try working it out or, you know, work out a few lines and then, oh yeah, that's what he was doing and make sure you get caught up. Okay. Uh, so, so same thing here. Now you want to write the formula. Okay. So that's AX squared. Plus AX. So when I say the formula, sorry, I mean this one. Yeah. Minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. All right. Just give me a moment. You gotta love being sick. Uh, yeah. Let's see. All right. So we're just gonna plug the uh, A, B, and C into that. So X equals minus seven plus or minus um, seven squared minus four times three times three uh, divided by two times three. So x equals minus seven plus or minus 49 minus 36. So what was that 13 or something? Yeah, it's gonna be 13, the square root of 13. I'll divide by six. So then let's see, it doesn't look like we have an imaginary number or anything. 
Okay, so I currently have x equals minus seven plus or minus the square root of 13 all divided by six. What would okay. be the uh, next thing to do? Well, you're basically done except for like presentation of your answer. Uh -huh. So, so I, I liken this to like, you know, your shirt's out or your shirt's untucked, your shirt's tucked. Like there's preferences, right? Like you mm -hmm. go to a formal dinner, maybe you tuck in your shirt. You know, I don't, I don't know. Here they want you to divide each of these by the six. Gotcha. And okay. that's just a preference. It's not like your answer is wrong. It's just they prefer it this way. So you do what they prefer. Gotcha. All right. Then I guess that's done. Good. Now uh, we can we should keep going here. If you got other questions, I can always make some up or find more like this. Um, okay. What would be best for you? Let's see. Ah, boy. Okay. Maybe. No, I think I get that. Uh, let's do. 29 yeah yeah we can do 29 okay that's gonna be find the equation of the line that passes through uh negative seven comma zero and is perpendicular to the line four y minus three x equals one great so this is this is actually kind of like a, a sat act type question here um so first thing is the perpendicular you need to find the slope of the given equation. Uh -huh. So the easiest way to find slope is to solve for y. So could you very quickly solve that equation for y for me? Yes. y equals, uh, what's that? Three divided by four x uh, plus one divided by four. Okay, that was really good. What is the slope of this equation? Uh, three over four. Good. Now you're completely done with that equation. And so I cross it out. Like you're, you don't wanna let it distract you. You've extracted the thing that you care about. Okay. Okay. Now the perpendicular, if, if we needed this slope, that's the parallel. The perpendicular, there's a couple of words that uh, people like to use. Uh, so one is um, opposite reciprocal. Mm -hmm. And the other one is flip negate. Do either of those stand out to you? Opposite reciprocal. Okay. Familiar. So reciprocal means the, the top becomes the bottom, the bottom becomes the top. And then you have to negate. That's what the opposite means. If it's already negative, it becomes positive. Okay. Now, really interesting. What is the product of these two numbers? This is just an aside here. Um, is, is that going to be one? It's negative one. Oh, right. Negative one. You learn why that is if you do anything with vectors or take more math, but uh, that's kind of a check, you know, if, if you're ever unsure the product of them. So this is what you needed. You really needed that number. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, does this specify the equation of the line? No. So, he so here are your options. Slope intercept, which means you need a slope and an intercept, the y-intercept specifically. Here's what you have. You have a slope, check. This is not the y-intercept though. So you don't want to use that one. Then there's point slope. Here's what you need for that one. A point, which you have, and a slope. So okay. what you're given tells you which one to use because if they don't specify it, you give them the one that's best for you. Okay. Now, if I were writing the test, I would tell you to write the equation in point slope form probably, because I don't want to grade, you know, three different forms of the line. But they didn't do that here. Now you've you've taken quizzes and tests. Are, does your teacher give you questions like 29 or does do they get yeah. manipulated? Uh yeah, yeah. There there are questions like these in tests. Okay. So we're gonna use point slope. So you got to know that the point slope is y minus y1 equals slope x minus x1. Your slope, we just found, is minus four thirds. So you need an x1 and a y1. That's what this is up here, x1 and y1. So you put those values in, y minus zero, x minus a minus seven. So you get mm -hmm. y equals minus four thirds, x plus seven. 
Hmm. Interesting. She usually has it in a different form. So, right. She um, probably uses a slope intercept, but you, uh-huh. you, you really got to pay attention to this stuff because it, it saves you time. Like you're on a traje- trajectory where you're going to take a lot more math. So, like in calculus, they, they give you questions like this with calculus stuff and you get to pick. So, you do, the, you do the one that's best for you. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Do you want one like this or do you want us to move on to some other problems? Uh, let me just see if there's anything else that I particularly desperately need. If, if you don't have any, there's a few here I'd like to kind of see if you know or have, you know. Yeah, sure. That'd be helpful. Yeah, um, I don't see anything I think I'll particularly struggle with. So I'm looking at like 15. 15 looks awkward potentially, especially with all the subscripts. Uh-huh. Um, what is your kind of thought on 15? So, you know, we read all the forms out and, you know, we'd pick sort of a root, I guess, equation. So I guess in this, that would probably be RC, uh, TC equals 165. They plug in the various forms, then simplify, you know, plug in other forms until Eventually, basically, we have every single form uh, solved for. So, 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 like, here's what I I heard: RCTC equals one sixty five, and then like this one here, y- you can solve for RC. Yeah. So it's so it's this is really RP over three, but RP is over here, on the in the left, and RP is really uh, six ninety three over TP. Yeah. So you would you would come down here and write. 693 over TP over three. Is that, that my understanding what you would do? Uh, That's RP. RP is 693 over TP. Mm-hmm. And then TC. TC is really TP minus two. Uh, I'm asking. I'm not. I'm just. Yeah. So. Um, let's see. Yeah. TC equals minus. Oh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. So that's what that would be. So the nice thing here is that 693 is divisible by this three. Um, the reason that works is because you're you're multiplying by the reciprocal. Uh-huh. And 693 gives you two, uh, 231. Yeah. Over TP. TP minus two equals 165. And from here, I assume you know how to solve. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, how about these uh, word problems at the beginning? Do those ever, ever see. get you uh, caught up on how to work them? Uh. Probably just, let's see, probably just one. So problem, num- problem number one? Yeah. Okay. Does, do you, do you feel like, do you go back to the section that it's in or do you? <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Just don't ahead. worry about that. Sorry. I know I keep asking questions. I'm sorry. Um, no I'm worries. Just, I'm just, you know, if you don't know how to do it, obviously go back to the section. Um, but sometimes seeing, like seeing Matthew work it out and it might help open up like, oh, these are actually not that hard, like as I think they are. So let's look here. We got a container, uh, contained 500 milliliters, uh, 52% water. How much water should be removed from the solution so that the remainder would only be 40% water? So we're, we're taking some out. There's an outlet pipe here. Yeah. All right. Okay. So oh, these are awful. <laughs> the, um, so here's what you're doing. Your, your percentage is, is, is a part to a whole. Uh-huh. Okay, and right right now, right now it's it's fifty two percent or 0.52 equals uh, x over 
500 and we and we could figure out x um if we needed to and we actually should just just because i think it'll help here um it's it's 0.52 times 500 uh for that uh it's basically 52 of every 100 so 500 times 0.52 is 260. So there's there's 260 milliliters uh, that makes this 52 percent water out of 500. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what are we doing? We're going to remove. We're going to remove. Okay. So when you remove, you take from both the top and the bottom. Yeah. And what do we want our new percentage to be? Uh, zero point. Or right. Zero point four. Right. Okay, so the, the overarching equation here is this part to whole. I mean, there's a lot of variations on this, but it, 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 you do need to know what you're starting with in this case. That, that's a nice thing to have. Yeah. Okay, uh, to solve this, you got to cross multiply, move some things around. Um, you can do it graphically. How much do you, do you tend to have to show a lot of work on your tests and quizzes? Uh, yeah. I, if uh, we don't show all our work, that uh, it'll instantly be distracted. Okay. Do you need help solving this one? Should we keep going? Yeah, sure. So 0.4 times 500 minus X equals, you can always put something over 1, 260 minus X. So 0.4 times, uh, times 400 there, or 500, sorry, uh, is uh, 200 minus 0.4 X. 260. So we're going to add X to both sides. That gives mm -hmm. you 0.6 X. Subtract 200 from both sides. Gives you 60. 260 divided by 0.6 will tell you how much that you need to remove, which is 100, ends up being 100. Uh, no, it looks like this question. All right, yeah. good. I, uh, I already did this, but I just wanted to confirm that my answer was correct, and it was. So. Okay. Do you not get answers in the back of the book on these? Uh, I have a different book for that. So. Okay. Okay. That, good. That is on my desk, though. All right. Yeah. Always check. I mean, it's it's like when you're driving. If you don't know where you're going, you'll never get there. So if you're ever yeah. unsure, check the answer. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um. Let's see. If we can do something real quick here on the other page. The page more of more of the solving stuff. Um. I don't know, is he, do these circles, the number 22, A and B, are those clear, those formulas? Yeah. Okay. How about something like 23? Uh, yeah, so uh, whenever we see a square root, unless it has a, I guess it wouldn't be called a subscript, but when it has a low number, a double, I don't know, wing, I don't have any academic language to stop it. <laughs> You divide it by one five. That's um, right. For example, but so I, I remember it this way. So the, this helps you to figure yeah, out where they yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. So it's four root two to the one fifth power, because there's really a there's really in parentheses here a one like that. Uh -huh. Okay. Now inside parentheses here, four can be written as two squared. Two can be written as two to the one half, one -half power. Yeah. Now, now, when the bases are the same and you're multiplying, you add the exponents. So that's two to the power of one. So we have to use improper fractions. All right. Then. Okay. So uh, you can you can look at that later. And then when the when you have an exponent to an exponent, you multiply. So sometimes the words are more important. You know, bases are the same, multiplying, you add the exponents. Exponent to an exponent, you multiply them. So, uh -huh. this, be, so this becomes five halves times one fifth, which is one half. So you'd probably see the answer like this.
Is that okay? Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at this right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, another thing we can do here, I'm going to just stop the recording. Our lessons are, are 50 minutes.